Welcome to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pavel Chakras, and in today's video, instead of comparing two pianos like I often do on my channel, I will instead be comparing two piano benches. Now, they may look similar at first glance, but actually there are a number of major differences between them. When you look at a piano bench and you think of a piano bench, probably the first thing that will come to mind, the first image you will think of is a bench very similar to this, the same kind of color, the same aesthetic, and this is arguably one of the most ubiquitous piano designs in the history of the piano. This exact bench was made by the Janssen Company, which is based in the United States of America, and their products are made here in the States as well. What makes this bench a little bit more special and more expensive than your typical Janssen bench, which already is expensive, is the fact that it has the Steinway logo here on the knobs. Of course, we have a Steinway D here at the recording studio, and this came with it, so that is why it is here today. Typically, your average Janssen bench, they do make some more affordable models, but your, your highest class one, like this one here, typically costs around $750. However, when you slap the Steinway logo onto it, that raises the price by around $250. I've been told that these Steinway benches typically go for around $1,000. So that is the USA built thousand dollar Steinway branded Jensen made bench. And the bench we have over here is definitely not a thousand dollars. It's not even half of that. It's less than half of that price. This bench typically would go for around $125 to $150, somewhere right in that ballpark. And of course, as you could, uh, as you could probably predict, it's not made in the new USA, but it's made in China. So in today's video, I'm going to be comparing a $125 Chinese bench to a $1,000 American bench and see what the differences are. Of course, there are going to be differences, and I'm not going to be trying to tell you in this video that the Chinese bench is better in every regard than the Steinway bench. Obviously, there will be some deficits to this bench, but each one kind of does have its advantages. So I thought I would take a look at this and show you guys the differences between a $1,000 bench and a $125 bench. Let's kick off this video, video by flipping these over and showing you the undersides and the mechanisms of both of these and what makes them different. And at the end of this video, if you look at the description after you watch this full video, if you actually like this bench as much as I actually do, I will have the contact information for the company and the person who I talked to with the company in the description. These are very affordable and I do actually like it for the price of the bench it is. So I'll put the contact info in the description if you're interested in purchasing one of these. These can be bought online through many other places and if you want the Steinway branding, because you do for some reason, you can probably go into a Steinway dealer and buy one there. So let's check out the insides and the inner workings of these benches and let's do that now. So this here is the inside of the Janssen bench. And as you can see, it's made extremely, extremely well. It's very, very durable theming. It's extremely industrial. It's made of very high quality materials. You've got a very high quality metal here on the inside that's very solid and very well made. You've also got lots of wood in the construction, although this top panel, bottom panel, whatever you want to call it here, is appears to be chipboard. However, the sides here of the um, bench are solid wood, and they seem to be very nice wood as well. And the legs, of course, which you can see here, are wood as well. But probably the most impressive thing about it, though, is the metal construction here for the mechanism. As you crank this um, little dial here, you can see that it is shrinking, and that means that the bench is actually getting taller. And if you turn it the other way, you can see that the mechanism there is slowly expanding, and that is meaning the bench is getting getting lower to the ground. The advantage of that is it gives you really, really fine control of the height. So if you really want it to be precise, it's gonna be doing a good job. But of course, if you want to have a radical change in the bench's height, it's gonna take you a long time to get there. Another advantage though about this particular bench is just the extremely high quality construction, although you do definitely get what you pay for when it comes to piano benches, because again, this particular bench costs $1,000. Overall, though, the build quality on this bench is nothing to worry about, and you this bench would last many, many years. But again, it is $1,000. Let's go look, though, at how the build quality looks like on a $125 bench and see how much different that actually is. So... This is the inside of the $125 piano bench, and while you might expect everything to be made of plastic and be absolute garbage, it's actually not as low quality as you would expect. We actually still have lots of metal in the inside here, and I think everything here that I can see actually does appear to be metal. It is not as high quality as you had in the Janssen bench, but still, 
it can't really it doesn't resonate very much but that still is metal it's very cold to the touch this over here is metal and as you can see instead of having a mechanical mechanism we have well it's still mechanical but we now have hydraulics instead of the complex mechanism we had in the Janssen bench now there are advantages and disadvantages to the hydraulic system probably the biggest disadvantage to it is that theoretically it can fail and you'll often see that happening with basically anything with hydraulics particularly like the trunks of automobiles and cars you'll see if they have hydraulics and they're 20 years old typically they will sometimes not work however the mechanical mechanism that we had in the Janssen bench over here would basically never fail so that is the disadvantage to the hydraulic system however I think you'd probably at least get maybe a year or two because you probably wouldn't use it much if you're the only person using it you'd probably never adjust the hydraulic height once you got it where you wanted it to be so at the same time it also might last equally as long if you never you moved the hydraulics the one advantage to it though is if you are going to be constantly raising the height this will raise it up much quicker than on the Steinway bench I mentioned how much control you had on the Steinway bench this doesn't have that fine control but you can raise the height of it really, really quickly. So that is a benefit to this bench. Um, when I was at the NAMM show, I noticed that everyone likes to have the benches really low this year for some reason. And so I had to constantly keep raising the height of every bench I went to, which took forever if they were manual benches. And if they were hydraulics, I just held the knob down and it shot up to the height that I wanted it to be at. This is the height adjuster that is underneath each foot of the Chinese piano bench, and it's a feature that the Janssen bench does not have. I know why it doesn't have it, because it's not a feature you typically use or need to use on a stage, but it is a nice quality of life feature. If you're performing in some odd location, like out in the wilderness, and the ground is not level, these height adjustments would come in very handy in such an instance where the ground isn't level. And it's very simple. It's just simply a bolt that screws in here, and if you unscrew it enough, it will eventually just come flying out like so. So that's kind of a really funny thing. But that is a nice quality of life feature that the Chinese bench has is the little height adjuster bolts. There's one on each foot. So kind of a cool little feature. So here's a closer look at the tops of the piano benches. Obviously, this is the part that you would actually sit on. And as you can see, the aesthetic is basically exactly the same with a couple of slight differences. Both of them have the tufting on top that you commonly will see in piano benches. This one has fewer uh, indentations in it than this one does. But other than that, the construction on top is basically the exact same idea. The material on this one here is a little bit squishier than the one on the Janssen bench. I believe the Janssen is going to be a little bit more firm than the bench that is is from China. Is this good or bad? I don't know. You decide, but that is one difference that I am noticing. Of course, I would have to say that the material on top of the Chinese bench feels a little bit cheaper than the material on the Simon bench, but honestly, not as radically cheaper as you would expect. One thing that I do, a couple of things that I dislike about this style of bench is that little bits of dust like to get stuck in these holes and they're difficult to get out. That will happen on both of these. And something that I find particularly mildly infuriating about this Steinway bench is the little decal on the bench, actually on the little um, knob. For me, on my side, that is perfectly aligned, perfectly vertical. But as you can see on your side, it is not. And I think I'm just going to leave it like that for the rest of the video to infuriate all of you. But as you can see, that's kind of an odd little design oversight. Perhaps they're supposed to be straight, but this one for some reason wasn't. Um, I just kind of find it a little bit annoying that the, the little liars aren't perfectly aligned. Of course, you'd turn it in any sort of way to get the height right, so you'd probably end up having it upside down when you're on stage anyways, but I still find it a little bit strange that they're not both perfectly aligned. This one over here only has one knob for the hydraulic lifting, so there is no knob on the other side. Other than that, those are really the biggest aesthetic differences about the benches, but the tops in particular are a very similar idea. Now let's go take them over to the piano and actually test them out. I don't think I'll be playing the piano, but I will sit down and test out the benches and we'll see how that works.
of you who have made it this far into the video, that's a little excerpt from a Chopin piece that I'm thinking about using in my videos when I go out on location and test out pianos. It's the kind of a piece that needs a good piano to play it, and it needs to be played with a lot of expression to really get the most out of the instrument. Let me know if you guys think that would make a good addition to my repertoire of piano test pieces. And also, Guess which bench I am sitting on. You probably can't even tell in the video because they look so similar. And maybe I just won't tell you which bench I'm sitting on. Actually, no, I will. The bench I'm sitting on here when I was performing that piece is the $125 Chinese bench. But you wouldn't even hardly know that from looking at it and sitting down on it. It hardly feels like a $125 bench. Sitting on it, I think that the cheap Chinese bench and the expensive Janssen bench feel almost the same. You'd hardly actually notice which one it is. I really think that this $125 bench is an absolute amazing deal. It doesn't look like a cheap bench. It doesn't feel like a cheap bench when you're sitting on it. And also the height adjustment thing is a bit more convenient, although perhaps a bit less long lasting than the mechanism in the Janssen bench. The mechanism in the Janssen bench is definitely a time tested and true way of adjusting the height. It probably will never fail. This one here probably will eventually, especially if you use it every day, but it's a lot quicker. Watch how fast it goes up. And that, I think, is the maximum height. And if I want to go back down, just turn this knob. And there we go. That's the minimum. So raising and lowering the height of the hydraulic bench is a lot easier and quicker than on the Janssen bench, which can be an advantage. Another little advantage this has over the Janssen that I haven't even talked about for all this time is the fact that this bench actually has storage, which I think is really cool. So you've got a little storage area. It's kind of thin, but you can definitely put a few music books in there and store some music, which is a feature of the Janssen bench, at least the particular one that I have, does not have. So I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this interesting video about two piano benches, and you're probably sitting here wondering which one is the winner, which one is the best, and... I mean, obviously the build quality of the Janssen bench is higher, but I think at the end of the day, it really matters about the music that you're playing and not so much about what you're sitting on. I know for a fact in some of the videos I've filmed, I've definitely sat on unusual and wacky things. I think in one of my videos, I was sitting on a homemade stool, and in another one of my videos, I was sitting on a trumpet case when I was playing an instrument. So I've certainly sat on some very strange things that are not orthodox stools. So. It really doesn't matter what you really sit on when you play the piano, but I still thought it would be a kind of a cool video to show you guys the cheap bench versus the expensive bench. If you're super wealthy, go for the expensive bench. It will last you a very long time. But if you're looking to save a bit of money, more than a bit of money actually, the $125 bench is a really great option. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, you might want to go check out my channel if you're new. I've got lots of cool videos of pianos, organs, keyboards, digital pianos, and all kinds of other neat stuff as well. So if any of that sounds cool, you might want to think about subscribing. And if you do subscribe, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.